couple tips on how to properly assemble your Thule T2 Pro XTR bike rack. The T2 Pro XTR is actually a brand new 2021 model. It just got released in mid-February. The key difference, I should say, between the XT and the XTR is that Thule finally came to their senses and added on two roller wheels on the bottom of this rack to allow easy transportation on hard, smooth surfaces. Now, the reason why I'm creating this video is because the assembly instructions to build this rack are awful at best. The first page tells you the securing arms, there should be two of them, eight bolts, eight washers, and an Allen key, which is this black one right here. It's a five millimeter Allen key. It tells you screw them on to the actual hitch sort of tower, if you will, by putting the bolt presumably through the washer and then passing it through and then screwing it on to the actual bike support bar and then where it gets interesting is that when you flip the page it's actually blank there's no print on here and then the next page that actually has diagrams now shows you how to actually attach the bike it doesn't explain anywhere how to install the wheel cups it doesn't explain to you uh, where the end caps go um, or even how to install the locks, right? Again, it's followed by a bunch of blank pages. And then at the very end, it just basically explains to you how the cable lock works and how to transport the unit. Before we get started, I want to tell you that these, the main support bar, uh, bolts are five millimeters. And then the sort of end cap screws, finishing screws are a smaller one. I don't even know what size this is probably a four or three, maybe. And then it comes with three lock cylinders and three keys. So I have one key already on my keychain, but here's one of the keys. And then here's the master blank to remove the cylinders. And then uh, I like to use a five millimeter uh, hex socket as well as some silicone lube, which I'll explain why it's used later. Now, when you unbox the unit, you'll get these items all packaged separately. This top bar is in one bag. This bottom bar is in another bag, this wheel strap, there's two of them, and then this wheel basket as well as um, this plastic finishing end cap and a series of screws. When you take things out and when you assemble this rack, you can either do this in the floor of your living room or as some people have suggested, you actually mount this tower piece here onto your vehicle first. And then with the assistance of a helper, they can help hold up each of these bars while you assemble those eight screws and washers. So one thing you'll notice about the bike support bars is that one of them has the Thule logo while the other one does not. So key thing to remember here is the one with the 2D logo goes up the very top closest to the release handle and should be facing up if the rack is up. Now to assemble them, you want to take this five millimeter bolt, pass it through a washer, and then it passes through into this bar. Okay, so there's gonna be four of these. So four bolts, four washers, two on each side. Now, as you assemble them, you don't wanna screw these down too tight just yet because what happens is that you'll notice on the support tower that there's these grooves and it allows you to adjust the bars left to right depending on your bicycle's fit. You'll have to play around with how your bikes fit on it and when you're done, you're gonna then do the final tightening and just snug these up by hand. Don't over torque them. They actually have some thread locker compound on the threads of these bolts so it won't come loose. Now, repeat the same process for the lower bar. So the lower bar, you'll notice, has no markings that say Thule on them. And so that's the most inner one closest to the hitch receiver. Now the next thing during the assembly process is the wheel baskets. There's two of them. The wheel baskets are installed in such a way that this pointed portion of it points towards the center of the bike rack. Now to install the wheel basket, you're gonna take four coarse threaded screws that come in the hardware pack and they're the smaller ones you want to coat them with some type of silicone uh, lubricant and the reason why is that these baskets are actually made out of a molded abs and they have a threaded shaft um, that falls through and passes through the frame and i find that not only does that silicone lube help make the screws install better but it also prevents the screws from rusting inside the abs basket um, should you guys ever decide to have to replace this piece that you're not going to be fighting with these screws years down the road when water and the elements have gotten to them and rusted them out so you just give those coarse threads some lubricant 
And then you're going to use the included Allen key that Thule provides, and you're just going to tighten each of these uh, until they're snug. Repeat that same exact process for the other basket on the other uh, bike support bar. Once you've installed the uh, wheel support baskets, that you're going to want to slide over the sort of rear tire uh, securing brackets um, onto the bike support bars. And that can be accomplished by simply taking this piece and then sliding it over the uh, end bar and then just giving it a good few smacks uh, to slide this on. Now, as far as the direction is concerned, you want to make sure that the release latch is pointing up. So here is the outer bar. Here's the top of the rack when it's folded up, that the release button is accessible or pointing up. Likewise, for the opposite end, same thing. You want to install it up. Now, from our hardware pack that we used to install the wheel baskets earlier, there's going to be two remaining coarse threaded screws as well as two washers and two plastic end caps. Now, before you install the end cap and this screw, there's actually going to be a foam block on the end of this hollow tube for this bar and likewise for that bar on that side. You do not remove those foam blocks. It actually helps keep dirt out from the inside of this bar. You're gonna pop this end cap on and then you're going to take that coarse threaded screw and that washer, join them together. So you see that closely here, there's a screw and then a washer and we're gonna coat it again with a little bit of the synthetic silicone grease onto the threads and then we're gonna tighten them down using our Allen key. Remember, these are all plastic pieces. They just need to be snugged up finger tight. Do the same for the end here. And the reason why the washer is actually needed is this piece here can slide, right? So you can move this around. And with the washer, it helps raise the head of the screw so that these end pieces don't actually have an opportunity to ever slide off. See, it acts as a stopper. The last and final step is to install the lock cylinders. You want to take the key what they call the blank installation key it has no bumps on it it's basically smooth you want to plug that smooth key into a lock cylinder like this you're going to take the cylinder and you're going to bring it up to one of the bars so here's the top bar here with the hole and you see that raised those raised tumblers you're going to match it up with that raised notch inside that hole Put that in like this, wiggle it until it passes through. And then when the face of the lock is flush to the surface, we're gonna pull this key out. And what happens is that it reverses all those tumblers and now locks the key into place. And you can check that by using your fingers and trying to push it out the opposite end. See, it's now secure. You're gonna repeat the process for the other bar. And then lastly, for the locking knob on the bottom. Now for the bottom knob, this one, you want to put it in, and if it doesn't go in all the way, just kind of give it a jiggle, right? Because there's like a, a wheel inside of there, so you just want to jiggle it until the cylinder goes all the way in and that the knob won't turn. Then carefully, with your finger holding the cylinder, pull that blank key out. Now you can test it with the actual key itself. Can I lock it? Now on the bottom knob, when you lock it, it should fr spin freely and the cylinder should never come out. So it's locked, so people can't undo that friction wedge. Same thing with the top here. I pull the cable lock out, put it in. Can I lock it? Now, if you ever wanna actually remove this lock cylinder, I should also remind you that you can only take these out when the lock is unlocked. So no one in the parking lot can just go up to your Thule and remove the cylinder. You actually have to use the key that was keyed for the cylinder, put into unlock mode, and then use that blank to insert it to pop this lock out. Here's another service tip, guys. A lot of complaints about the Thule T2 Pro XT or the XTR rack is that people say that the rear tire sort of holder strap is too short and that Thule is misadvertising that it can hold tires that are up to five inches thick because they say the strap is too short. That's actually not true and the Thule instruction manual does a terrible job of explaining how to revise this. Now right now this is how the strap is set from default from the factory, right? It's 
there's some room here for a normal bike tire, but not for a fat bike tire. What you need to do is you need to press the button down to completely release the strap. Then you're going to remove the rubber stopper. And then you're going to push the strap in until you see it pop out of the holder like so. Right, the default location is this hole underneath the button. I'm going to pull that out completely. And then what you're going to do is on the underside of it, you'll see that there's two holes. You want to feed it through this first hole. Okay. And then you're going to pull. And you'll see the end of the strap actually latch into this bottom hole here. Okay. So you can give it a good solid tug. And then you're going to replace the rubber rim protector. And then now you'll notice that the strap is a lot longer to accommodate those much thicker tires. So I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.